Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 398. What's going on, everybody? So your boy was finally able to pull himself away from some hockey, considering that Tampa Bay is absolutely lighting the Chicago Blackhawks up. It's a 4 nothing route, so I figured it's the perfect time to slide into the studio and record the segment. Now, we're not going to spend too much time with my opening monologue here. We're going to jump into the article pretty quickly. But just a heads up for the rest of the week, we have the same old schedule as usual, morning updates, daily drops every single day. As long as, you know, the news is there and we have some stuff to talk about, we'll have two brand new episodes every day. At the very least, we will have one brand new episode every day. And then we wrap that all up now on Sundays with the live stream. I've heard a lot of people's um, concerns about using Facebook and I get it for sure. I'm looking for a different platform that is accessible for everybody, for everybody who wants to use it, uh, to make it a little bit um, easier for people to access if they don't want to use Facebook. But as of now, we're still going to be using Facebook, um, and it will be located at the same exact spot as usual. But moving forward, I am looking for alternative options as opposed to using the Facebook live stream. As of now, it's just the most convenient and easiest way. And it seems like most folks have access to it already, and it's just an easy click for them. But again, I am certainly looking at other platforms moving forward because I really just don't have any confidence in Facebook or any of these other clowns from Silicon Valley. So that's what we have going on this week. Nothing too crazy, nothing too exciting. Um, I might have another video or two posted on that Facebook page this week as well. Not live videos, but just a uh, a couple of, meh, you know, wrap-up videos per se. Or just a couple of uh, maybe like bonus type videos. I plan on being in the mountains this weekend, so... I might record a few while I'm up there, like I talked about doing earlier, and adding those to the page as well. So that's pretty much all we have going on this week, and obviously, if news breaks, we'll jump on top of that as soon as it breaks as well. But there we are for the week, and what to expect, and hopefully... You guys and girls and everybody else will be joining me for the live stream on Sunday because it's been a lot of fun and having the interaction with with the listeners is probably the best part of having this podcast, honestly. I love BSing with you folks. I love listening to what all of you have to say about the case and about other things. And it's just a an all-around good time on Sundays. So if you haven't popped in yet, I suggest that you do. All right, so let's move on to our article for tonight. We have an article from Bloomberg Law. And we're going to touch on a subject that we haven't talked about in a while here on the podcast. And that's Les Wexner and Victoria's Secret. Now, we know that they have been accused of having an absolutely disgusting culture from the top all the way down where harassment was okay, um, the abuse of women was okay, and every other thing that you could possibly imagine that these scummy people do was going on in the world of Victoria's Secret. And for a long time, they were able to avoid any kind of scrutiny. They were able to avoid anyone taking a look into them as they're given the keys to the kingdom to a notorious pedophile and sexual offender, while at the same time trying to sell your daughter sweatpants and other types of disgusting merchandise from their store. This dude and Victoria's Secret played a huge role when it comes to Jeffrey Epstein being legitimized. And let's not forget that Les Wexner is also named as someone who allegedly abused Virginia during this trafficking thing. 
So it's not just like Les Wexner is somebody who's on the periphery, right? It's not like he's just somebody who might have got caught up with uh, with Epstein because they were seen at a social function together once or twice. That's not what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with somebody who was intimately involved with Jeffrey Epstein, so much so that he gave the keys to the kingdom to Jeffrey Epstein, let Epstein control his financial fortune, and also gifted him the most plush townhouse in New York City. Does that sound like someone who has a relationship with Epstein who is just, you know, on the outsides looking in? Does that sound like somebody who doesn't know everything about Jeffrey Epstein pretty much? I mean, you would think to give him the keys to the kingdom that you would have done a complete and thorough background check and search and spoke to everybody that you possibly could about who this man was. So you mean to tell me that Les Wexner, one of the richest men in the world with so many assets, didn't do that? He had no idea who he was dealing with, and he wants us all to believe he was just this doddering old fool who was taken for a ride by this dropout, Jeffrey Epstein. Now, that's something that the legacy media might believe, and that's something that they might go ahead and just okay and give their stamp to approval, but that shit's not going to fly here on the podcast. Those answers aren't going to work around these parts, and more information is obviously needed. And if there was no smoke here, then why would all of these lawsuits be coming to light now? Why would so many people have the same story to tell about what went on at Victoria's Secret? Oh, I know. They'll say, oh, it's a money grab. They're looking for money. And that's always the excuse, right? But in reality, I think this is obvious that there was a culture of harassment and a culture of abuse from the very top all the way down. Wexner, um, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, um, the other character that was uh, his uh, partner, Rezik or whatever. All of these people, all of these people knew the deal. All of these people played their part. And while I think it's great that Victoria's Secret's getting sued here, I hope that Oh, oh, and and the board. Okay, good. So the board's getting sued as well. So everybody, and that's the way it should be, right? Personal responsibility needs to be taken by these people who work with and act as a vehicle to people like Jeffrey Epstein. Well, there's no repercussions for them bringing Jeffrey Epstein along and basically aiding and abetting his crimes. They're just going to walk scot-free, huh? Wexner Elbrand's board sued for Epstein ties harassment culture. This article was authored by Mike Leonard. Leslie H. Wexner, a.k.a. the Crypt Keeper, and other longtime senior leaders at Elbrand's Incorporated were hit with a shareholder lawsuit in Delaware over the Victoria's Secret parents' entrenched culture of misogyny, bullying, and harassment, as well as ties to Jeffrey Epstein and other egregious mismanagement. So the shareholders are suing them. Just as Victoria's Secret was starting to see a couple of bucks start coming through the till during the pandemic, since they didn't have uh, you know, the, the brick and mortar stores going on and everything had moved to digital, they had been making a bit of a profit, it looked like. But now with this coming down the pipe, it's just another shot to the eye. For L Brand's Victoria's Secret and Les Wexner. And guess what? I feel zero sympathy for these people. Any of them. If you were on that board and you didn't step up and do anything, you should be held liable for your part. If it was a big part or a small part. And every single person on that board had a strong voice. They could have stood up and said, look, we're not comfortable with Jeffrey Epstein being here. But none of them had the courage to stand up to Wexner, just like all of the scoundrels and cowards in the legacy media still don't have the stones to stand up to Wexner. 
The board did nothing to address decades of sexual harassment by top L Brands executives, while the underqualified Epstein inexplicably managed Wexner's fortune, and while the billionaire sex offender apparently used Wexner's home for liaisons with victims, the suit says. Yo, this is damning stuff. And I don't know how any sort of criminal case that's working its way through the courts can't take notice of what's going on here. And I don't understand how the law can act like Les Wexner wasn't a crucial member of Jeffrey Epstein's circle. It's gross that they're ignoring it. It's gross that they're scared to pursue Wexner. These people and the legacy media should be ashamed of themselves. Oh, they have no problem MF and other people ruining other people's lives and careers, but when it's one of their elite handlers, forget about it. Zero chance that's going to happen. Don't you know the boss from over at ABC, whoever that is, is probably over at Wexner's house for a nightcap? Well, you think these people aren't all friends? It's a very small club, folks. Epstein survivor Virginia Roberts has also claimed that he directed her to have sex with Mr. Wexner and another survivor has accused Wexner's wife, Abigail, of mismanagement while Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell sexually assaulted her at the couple's home according to the complaint filed Tuesday. And it's, it's, I don't understand how... This guy can avoid the scrutiny, the spotlight, how he can avoid any kind of shine. This dude should be, be, he should be put on blast. Reporters should be camped out in front of his house, demanding answers. Prosecutors should be making him go under oath to talk about what he knows. You know, they're so quick to want to go after Andrew, and I agree, of course, Joe Exotic of the Windsor family should be brought in, but they have the ability to force Les Wexner into talking to them. He is an American citizen. He's in America. They can hit him with a subpoena and compel him to go on record. Don't you think that would send a statement to the rest of these people that the government is no longer effing around? Don't you think that might send a statement to the survivors that the government is finally taking things seriously in this regard? L Brands didn't immediately respond to, re- to a request for comment Tuesday or provide contact information for Wexner, who stepped down as CEO and chairman in May. And that was all CYA, right? Cover your ass. They wanted to protect the shareholders. It's not because Wexner was doing it because he thought it was the right thing to do. These kind of people don't ever give away power. Once they attain it, they grab onto it and hold onto it for dear life. He had to step down because he understood the writing was on the wall. And if he stuck around any longer, then he might have that publicity that he does not want. Well, Mr. Wexner, the Crypt Keeper, that publicity is going to seek you out anyway. You can only hide from this story for so long. You can only avoid the fallout for so long. And Mr. Wexner, there is a change in the wind and the wind is blowing in your direction. The derivative suit filed in Delaware Chancery Court largely concerns accounts that longtime former L Brands marketing chief, Edward Razick, who's also named as a defendant, spent years harassing women throughout the company, including both fashion models and senior executives. Oh, and what, we don't think this is true? I mean, I know for a fact I've worked with people like this Resic guy. Higher-ups who are a bit handsy with staff, who are always making lewd and rude comments to women, uh, co-workers, and employees. So, a guy like Rezik, who was running around for years and years and years, feeling like he's the king of the world because he's protected by Wexner, and he's a bigwig at Victoria's Secret, he felt like he could run around and demean these girls, talk shit to them, call them fat, you know, touch them, whatever he wanted to do. When in reality, everybody knows that's not the case. Here's an idea. Keep your hands to yourself, you sick, old, fat bastard. 
When the misconduct was reported to Wexner and the board, they quietly settled with the alleged survivors and had them sign non-disclosure agreements according to the complaint. Yeah, sounds like Congress. I mean, if Congress is doing it, why shouldn't Wexner? Shouldn't we demand that the incoming administration and the new Congress and Senate turn over the, that slush fund so we can see what's what? Since we're talking about uh, non-disclosure agreements, how about all of those are exposed as well? And when it comes to Les Wexner and these these non-disclosure agreements, it's it's absolutely disgusting. What, you think that they didn't use their power to flex on these girls that signed these agreements? And, you know... Don't get it. Don't get it twisted. A few hundred grand's a few hundred grand, right? But when you're dealing with all of that power and you know that you don't have the money to face it in court, what else are you going to do besides sign the NDA, get your few bucks and keep it going? Notwithstanding the numerous complaints to human resources, neither Wexner nor any member of the board, including the purportedly independent directors, took action to protect the company's employees. Or seek damages from Razik, the suit says. Of course not, because Wexner was protecting Razik. Wexner knew what Razik was. Wexner knew what Razik was up to, and Wexner was okay with it. At least that's the way it looks. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he'll deny it, and he'll deny that he even knew it was happening, and Razik will take, Razik will take the fall, and everyone else will take the fall, and the Crypt Keeper will come out of this spotless. Because we know that the, the cowards in the legacy media, well, they don't, they don't want to do their job. And those of us who do want to do our job end up getting shadow banned. So my question is, when is the legacy media going to step up and really ask the hard questions of Les Wexner? It cites reports of an extramarital affair between an employee and longtime chief financial officer, Stuart Bergdorfer, that spread through the company, damaging morale. Former top executive Charles McGuinnon had a relationship with an employee while he was head of human resources, according to the complaint. The suit also accuses the Wexners of giving Epstein access to the company's facilities, assets, and personnel. All right, so when you're in a management position, you should not be dating your employees, okay? You shouldn't even be dating your peers or your other or our colleagues who are other managers or other people in the company. It's a bad look. You know, my saying has always been, don't dip your pen in company ink. And I have lived by that. Every management role I have ever had, even when I was dis- dropping some discipline on somebody, I always had a supervisor in the room with me to protect myself. And you see these people and I see these people all the time when I was in the corporate world who were just running around like it was a meat market or they were a a contestant on Love Island. As if these employees want to date you, you fat, disgusting old bastard. Stop pressuring them. And while you're at it, go take an hour in the gym. Mr. Wexner knew or should have known that Epstein was using his relationship with the Wexners to recruit aspiring models, the complaint says. And it was a lot more than that even, right? It wasn't just to recruit them. He was using this as, according to, you know, uh, survivors and other people in the know, they were running these girls as escorts, the ones that they were bringing over from Eastern Europe. They were coming over here and they were being used as victims of sex trafficking. And they weren't even getting modeled, modeling gigs. So, and recruiting aspiring models, if you mean, oh yeah, I can get you a job with uh, uh, Victoria's Secret, and that ends up being them getting abused at their casting call. Well, yeah, I guess that was Epstein getting them jobs. It also links the misconduct allegations to the collapse of a transaction that would have seen private equity firm Sycamore Partners buy a majority stake in Victoria's Secret for $525 million. After the sale broke down over the COVID-19 pandemic, the parties sued each other in Delaware, Sycamore seeking to exit the deal, L Brands trying to close it by court order, but ultimately agreed to simply walk away from the agreement. And a lot of that had to do with the closures of the brick and mortar stores during the COVID uh, outbreak, the, the first wave. Now, we discussed that at length. And when Sycamore bounced on L Brands, 
I figured it was going to be a dark day. But somehow they found a way to rebound a bit here and relying on their online sales, they've been able to turn a little bit of a profit. But I think with this bad news coming out once again, it's just going to reinforce the fact that nobody should be buying anything from Victoria's Secret at this point. L Brands may have opted not to seek a breakup fee from Sycamore despite having the stronger litigation position because the private equity firm used the misconduct allegations as leverage, the suit says. And why wouldn't they, right? If that's going to get you a better deal, I would use it as well, especially considering that it occurred. It's not like you're defaming them. It's not like you're talking trash. That didn't happen. This happened, okay? These people, they were not good at their jobs, okay? They didn't do the right thing. They let people get abused. In fact, they were the ones who promoted this whole entire culture of harassment and abuse for years and years and years at Victoria's Secret. And not only that, to top it all off, you give Jeffrey Epstein the keys to the kingdom and then you act like you have no idea what sort of monster he is or was well crypt keeper Les Wexner nobody's buying it if you'd like to contact me you can do that at Bobby Capucci at protonmail.com that's B-O-B-B-Y C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com you can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. And remember, folks, wherever you get this podcast from, make sure that you subscribe. All right, everybody, I'll be back tomorrow morning, and we will pick up where we left off.